All right, so we're doing section five today in chapter eight, which is adding and subtracting uh, rational expressions. Uh, in my opinion, this is the uh, this is the most difficult uh, section in the chapter. This, along with uh, the beginnings of eight point three, but I think as eight point three gets a little bit more consistent and more uh, practice, it's a little bit easier. Uh, the reason why I think this is uh, difficult for most students is because fractions are already, already difficult for most students, let alone putting functions into them. So it's very, very important that you watch this, pay attention, don't just write down the notes, try and follow along with what I'm saying as I go through this, and even rewatch it if you need to. I'm hoping we can still finish it in one 15-minute session so that way it's easier for you to rewatch it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the only term that we really need to talk about today is um, it's called a complex fraction, and we'll see this later on towards the end. This is probably the most uh, difficult portion of this section, which is at the very end, um, but we will get to that uh, then. So a complex fraction is when you have a fraction in a fraction, and we've talked about that briefly in class, uh, what you do when you have a fraction in a fraction, but this is a little bit different um, because of the addition and subtraction that we're doing. So the reason why addition and subtraction is so uh, so much more difficult than multiplying is because the same thing with numerical fractions the procedure to add or subtract two rational expressions depends on whether or not they have like or unlike denominators so when we did things like you know when you did numbers one-third plus you know five-thirds the same thing is true about uh, rational expressions is the denominator has to be the same and the denominator will stay the same so this ends up being six-thirds which is two. Whereas if you had like one third plus one fourth, you would have to find a common denominator to solve that. And the same thing is gonna be true with what we're doing here. Now, some of it's easy, some of it's harder. So we'll go through some of these examples. The good thing is the first page of this should only take us a couple minutes because it's all like uh, terms on the denominator. So what we'll do is, because 6x and 6x are the same, we can just combine the top. Nine plus two is 11. Uh, well, here, let me, let me back up here. We do 9 plus 2. I'm just showing you every step here. And that's equal to 11 over 6x. Now, make sure you're paying attention to see if this can be simplified anymore. Always factor where needed and make sure that it, uh, nothing can be canceled out. Because 11 and 6 are not uh, common factors, we cannot do anything. So that is our final answer. Okay, what I want you to do is you have four over here. They should only take you a couple minutes. I want you to do these quickly on your own. They all have common denominators. And then again, don't forget to check to make sure that they're completely simplified at the end. So hit play when you're ready. All right, so for the first one, you, again, all the denominators are the same. So we do seven minus five is two over 12x. The bottom has to stay the same. But again, don't forget to simplify. 2 and 12, uh, 12 can both be divided by 2, so we have a reduce of 1 over 6x. And notice the x has to stay on the bottom. Okay, so make sure we're clear about that. Next one, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 over 3x three squared, the 3's cancel out, so we're left with 1 over x squared. Again, when the 3's cancel out, this is not 0, it's 1, and then the x squared stays on the bottom. Next one, uh, 4x minus x, these are like terms, so 4x minus x equals 3x, and then the x minus 2 stays the same. That's as simplified as we can get. And the last one, which is actually kind of tricky, uh, we have 2x squared plus 2. The main thing you got to remember that I normally see as mistakes made is people thinking that 2x squared plus 2 is 4x squared. These are not like terms. They have to stay as is. However, this can be factored. 2x squared plus 2 has a common factor of 2. And what's left on the inside is x squared plus 1, which is the exact same thing that we have on the bottom. So those actually cancel out, and we're only left with 2. So that is a little bit tricky, because you may have thought that this was your final answer right here, when it really wasn't. So we need to make sure that we understand that we have to, whenever we can, we have to try and factor and see if it cancels anything out. So, all right, so let's move to the next page. And, uh, Yep, let's get moving. So now let's talk about what happens when we have unlike denominators. So I'm going to try and go a little bit slow on this, um, so that way you can kind of see what we're doing. So the step one, no matter what, which is kind of the same as what we did when we multiplied, is to always factor. You always want to factor as much as you possibly can. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor everything I can over here, and I'm going to write it over here so you can see it. 7 can't be factored. x plus 4 cannot be factored. 3x minus 9 can be factored. So 3x minus 9 becomes 3 on the outside and x minus 3 on the inside. And also x squared minus 9 can be factored. We have x squared minus 9 becomes x plus 3 and x minus 3. Okay, so now that those are factored, what we're going to do is we're just going to rewrite this with our new factors. And watch what I do and just follow along. So I have not done anything yet. I'm just rewriting these because they are equal to each other. So I rewrote 3x minus 9 as 3, quantity x minus 3. And then over here I'm rewriting it as x plus 3 and x minus 3. Okay, so now... Here is where it gets a little bit trickier. Now, so th just so we're not confused, I'm going to continue on down here. All I'm doing is rewriting this again. Just so you guys don't, you know, we don't get caught up in me having to rewrite this later. So now what we need to do, if I wanted to subtract this, I cannot subtract it because my denominators are not the same. Now, what we've done in the past is we've said, well, if we just multiply everything together on the bottom, it'll be a common denominator. And yes, this is true. You can do this. However, I would not we probably don't want to multiply these together because all it's going to be is a big mess at the end, and we're going to have to simplify again. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to find the least common multiple. Now, this may not make sense. It says by writing each term to the highest power it occurs for either polynomial. So basically what we're looking at is we want a common multiple. And common multiples, in my mind, are sometimes easier when dealing with expressions because we really only need one of each. So what's going to happen is, is because we have a 3, okay, because we have an x minus 3, because we have an x plus 3, those are all the three different things that we have. We do not need to repeat anything that we already have. So because x minus 3 is already common, we only need one of them do not need two of them. Whereas if we multiplied the entire thing together, we would end up with x minus 3 and x minus 3. We only need one. So what we're going to need is we need a 3. Okay, That's, that's all by itself. Uh, that's something that we need. We need x minus 3. Okay, And we need x plus 3. We do not need another x minus 3. We already have it. Now, what this means by it says to the highest power. Now, this is not in this example, but for example, let's say we had uh, one of our factors on one of them was x minus 3, and let's say on the other one it was x minus 3 squared. We would not need the x minus 3. All we would need is the x minus 3 squared. That's what it means by the highest power that it occurs. So if x minus 3 is here and x minus 3 squared is over here, we would only have x minus 3 squared. But because there's no exponents here, we don't have to worry about that. So now, what does it mean that we do with this? This is where it gets a little bit tricky, but hopefully you can follow along. Everything that you see here in your least common multiple, you want that on every problem that you do to write down what your least common multiple is. And then what you're going to do here is we are trying to make this into this. So essentially, whatever you're missing, whatever you're missing from here, so we have 3 and x minus 3. So we have 3 and x minus 3, so we're missing the x plus 3. That's what we're going to write here. We're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by x plus 3. Remember, the only reason why we can, the reason why we have to do this is because it's got to equal 1. We cannot be changing our equation. And x plus 3 over x plus 3 equals 1, so we're not changing it at all. We're just multiplying it by 1, essentially. Okay, and then over here, again, we're just going to multiply by what's missing. We have x plus 3, we have x minus 3, the only thing we're missing is 3. So we're going to do 3 divided by 3. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to simply multiply. This is all going to be 1 now. The denominators are going to be the same. We do 7 times x, and 7 times 3 is 21. And on the bottom, it's just going to simply be our three terms that we have. So 3, and then x minus 3, and x plus 3. And then over here, we just have x plus 4 times 3. So we have 3x plus 12, and on the bottom we have our 
three factors again because remember this was the point of what we were doing we're trying to get the denominators to be the same and that's exactly what we just did now our denominators are exactly the same so all we need to do is combine what's on the top so we do 7x minus 3x is 4x 21 minus 12 is 9 so we have 4x plus 9 on top and then our denominator stays exactly the same and from here, you leave it like this. There's nothing else you need to do unless something can be factored still, unless something can be canceled out. Nothing here can be canceled out. 4x plus 9 cannot be canceled out with anything on the bottom, so we leave it as is. Okay. So again, if you need to rewatch this, rewatch this and try and see how I got it. Otherwise, go ahead and do these two below on your own. The first one should be easier than the second one, and then just go ahead and hit play when you're ready. Okay, so uh, we're ready to go here. The first one, you didn't have to factor anything, but you did need to find your LCM. And notice I kept it separate here. So I kept my LCM as 4x times 7. And the reason why I did that is because then it makes it easier to figure out what to do here. So I have 3 over 4x, and what I do is, what am I missing for my LCM? I'm missing 7. So that's why I multiply by 7 over 7. And over here, I have 1 over 7. What am I missing? I'm missing my 4x, so I multiply by 4x over 4x. Multiplying straight through, 21 over 28x minus 4x over 28x. Keep the bottom the same. Nothing to combine on the top. You just write it out as 21 minus 4x, so there is your answer. Second one, a little bit more difficult. First thing you should do is always factor. The first factors were x minus 4x plus 3. The second one factored to be 12 quantity x minus 4. So now you write your LCM. Remember, you write everything once. You don't write it multiple times, and you only do the highest power. So our LCM here was 12, done, x minus 4, done, done, and x plus 3. So there's our LCM. So then we go through and we multiply this one by whatever we were missing. We're missing the 12, so we did 12 over 12. This one, we were missing the x plus 3, so we multiplied the x by x plus 3 over x plus 3. We end up with 12x on top. Our full uh, LCM on the bottom, over here we have 5x plus 15. We combine this, and it ends up being 17x plus 15 over our LCM, which is 12 quantity x minus 4 times the quantity x plus 3. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's move on. Again, you know, bring questions to class. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll uh, spend some... All right, so we're not going to have enough time in this video to finish uh, this one right here. So go ahead and just go to the second video, second part, um, and it should only be about five minutes long. So uh, go ahead and get to that, and that way we'll keep this as short as possible.